Welcome back to part number 15 where we're creating a shiny web application. And what we did in the last video is we created a login form. And what I want to do today is I want to implement the cookie based authentication method from the shiny author package. And what they're doing here in the sample code, they're connecting to a SQL database. But what we'll be doing, we're going to connect to a Mongo database. And we basically just follow the code instructions here and um, substitute some of the code, but we're pretty much pasting everything that's in here. So we'll copy this and then go back into um, into this R script. So in here, I already have a configuration file, and that's a YAML file that has information about the username, the password, the cluster the database name and also the, the collection names. So we'll have two collections. One collection is about the user data. So the logging information, password and username. And then the second collection is about the logins when a user has logged in last and to store the cookies in there, the cookie information. So what we'll do first is we're just going to grab the username from the configuration file. So we'll say config and then dollar sign user. Then we'll have the password in here. We'll say config and then we'll grab the password. Then we have the cluster. And then we have the database name as well. And then we also have the collections. So in here we have the two collections. One is the user data collection. The other one is the user logins con collection. And what we'll do in here, we'll split this um, string into a vector of length two by the white space. So we'll say string split and then we'll split it by the white space. And we get back a list. So we'll just unlist it to make it a vector. And I first have to load all the libraries. And then what we get is the user data collection and the user logins collection. And then we can run the string as well. And then what we'll do next is we um, map over the two strings inside collections. So we'll say collections, then we're using the map function. And then what we'll do, we're using the MongoLite package and the Mongo function. So in here we'll specify the collection name, which is going to be .x, the placeholder, and then the URL is going to be the connection string here. And then also the database, which we've stored in here. So what we'll say is collection, which is .x, then we have the database, which we call db, and then we have the URL, which is going to be equal to the connection string in here. And so if we run this, we should get connected to both collections. So here we have the user data collection and then the user logins collection. So I'll call this connection and then I'm also going to turn this into a function. So we'll need a return statement and we'll return a list. We'll say user base, which is equal to the first element in the in connection. And then we also have logins. 
which is equal to the second element in there. Then I'm going to create a function. I'm just going to call this MongoDB connection. And I'm going to indent this properly. And then what we can do is we can go into the app.r file. And then we can, so right now, the user information um, is inside the app.r file. But what we can do is we can just delete this and then now read it in from the Mongo database. So in here, what I'll do is I'm just running the function here in the app.r file. And I'm going to call this just connection. Then I'm going to run this function here. And I'm using a global assignment for now. And then what we can do is we can say connection. Then we're going to use the user base collection. And then in here I'm using insert. And then I'm inserting the user base tibble. So if we run this, we've inserted now the tibble with the user information. And if we go back into Chrome, here we have all the databases and collections. So here we have the YouTube dashboard database and the user data collection. And this is the one we just wrote to the database. So if we go back into R, what we can do now is we've deleted the user base table here in the app.r file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say connection. Then I'm going to select the user base collection. And then instead of insert, I'm going to say find. And this is going to read in the table in here. Then I can delete this here as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just copying again what was in the GitHub repository for the Shiny Author package. And then I'm pasting it in here. So we've already established a connection here and then read in the user base table in here. So we can delete all of that. We can leave the cookie expiry one and then for the add session to database function, what I'll do is the connection is going to be connection. And then we're using the logins collection. Here we can leave the table as it is. And then instead of db write table, what we'll do is we'll say con dollar sign and then find to read in the data. And then we have another function here. This is to get session IDs from the database. So the connection is again, the logins collection. The expiry we can leave as cookie expiry that we defined here. And then instead of db read table, what we'll do is we'll say con connection dollar sign find to read in the logins table and what I'll do I'll just just going to what I'll do is I'll say con dollar sign insert so the collection can be found later when we're going to read it in here and then I'm going to read in 
or I'm going to write an empty going to write this table to the database. Okay, so if I save this now, I'll just call this Mongo functions. And then what I'll do is I can delete all of the code here. But what I do is I'm going to copy paste the logging server arguments and I put them in here. Then I'll save this and then I can delete everything in here. And then I can delete the libraries too. So what we have in here is we have the um, connection. So we're connecting to the YouTube database and then we're having these two collections that we have in here. And then we're returning the user base collection and the logins collection. And then in here we have the add session ID to the database and instead of find this should be actually insert because we're writing to the database we're adding the session IDs and then here we're reading the session IDs from the Mongo database so we can save this and go back into the app.r file and yeah, I hope that was everything. Let's see if this works. So again, we get uh, the login form. So in here, I'll put in my username and also my password. So it seems to work. And then if I go back into the the collection then here we get the user login collection and here that's the one that I wrote in manually and then I think I forgot to yeah I forgot to reverse it so if we go back into R and then into this file here this should be user and this should be session ID so let's save this and then let's run it again so now what we get we get the login form again and so I'll just log in again And now if I log out again, or I'm closing the app and I'm going to log in, I'm not supposed to log in with my credentials again. It should just work that I'm logged in already. And it works. So I didn't have to put in my credentials again to log in, it just works. And now if we're going back to the MongoDB tab and we look here at the collection we see that it stored the information here with when I logged in with the session ID and what user it was and here as well so that was everything for this video I think in the next one we're actually connecting to the API to get um, real data and data in real time and yeah, I think we're pretty much, we're almost done with the entire application. We, what we might do is we'll have a little menu up here where we have the um, main dashboard here. And then maybe 
in the other tab we have a time series model where we're predicting the page views or also the sessions um, into the future a month or so. So I'll see you in the next video.